very good day to you and welcome to the Revival Train. We are so excited to be with you again. I hope you've got your ticket. <laughs> it's for free. And I want you to sit down in that train. That's right, it's a virtual train. And I want you to listen to the message. I hope you enjoyed that. Now I want to speak to you today about my favorite subject. And it really has been, I've been speaking to the camera crew and we've been reminiscing about a miracle working God. I want to speak to you about the subject of faith. What is faith? Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. And we really need faith like never before in these times that we are living in. 
I want to go straight to God's Word. If you've got your Bible with you, maybe you'd like to read along with me. I'm reading out of the New King James Version, Matthew chapter 14, and I'm reading from verse 34. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, that's Jesus, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Isn't that incredible? They came from everywhere. If we can just touch the hem of his garment. You know that when Jesus went to heaven, Peter and John, when they would walk down a road, people would hear them come in and they would lay the sick on the sidewalks of the road and the shadow of Peter touching those, going over those bodies would heal them. Faith is what we need like never before. Simple, childlike faith. Not childish faith. Childlike faith. You know, with a little child, if you tell him, I mean, I remember when my one son, Fergie, was small, I'd take him out, and up in the sky, there would be a beautiful full moon, bright yellow, and tongue-in-cheek, I'd say, Fergie, that uh, moon there, it's made of cheddar cheese. And he would say, yes, Dad. You know? And somebody would say to him at school, nah, you know, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And the moon is made of rock and dust. And he would say, no way. As my dad said, it's made of cheddar cheese. We need faith to believe for the impossible. Jesus says it. We believe it. That settles it. Remember, that was the favorite adage of Smith Wigglesworth, the master plumber from Yorkshire, England, who uh, laid his hands on many sick people, some dead, actually. And they were raised from the dead. Why? Because of faith. Faith in what? Faith in faith? No. Faith in the Son of God. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be it according to your faith. If we look at Mark chapter 5 and verse 28. There was a woman who had been bleeding continually for 12 years. Can you ima imagine how her body must have just basically disintegrated. She spent all her money. She'd been to every doctor, every specialist. No one could help her. In desperation, as a last, a last effort, she said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I know that I will be healed. If we look at Matthew, Mark chapter 5, verse 28, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Who are you trusting today? You know that that woman pushed through that crowd, eh? I can just imagine her almost crawling through the crowd trying to get to the master. She touched his garment and he turned around in the crowd and said, who touched me? The disciples must have said, Lord, there's people pushing you from every single side. He knew because virtue came out of his body and that woman was healed at that moment. And she was so embarrassed. Remember when he said, who touched me? And she probably said, I did, Lord. He said, woman, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to start trusting the Lord. But you know, you say, well, Angus, you know, I have been trusting the Lord and nothing's happened yet. Maybe you and I need to be like that farmer. You know that farmer, his name was Job. Some people say that is the oldest book in the Bible, the book of Job. Job was a farmer, just like I am. Job lost everything. Remember, everything. He lost his farm. He lost his family. He even lost his health. He ended up sitting on an ash heap in town. He was the laughing stock of the town. He had boils from the top of his head to the tip of his toes. Even his own wife said to him, Why don't you just curse God and die? And what did he say? His response was in Job chapter 13, and verse 15, though he slay me, yet will I still trust him. That is the kind of faith that God is requiring from you on this revival train. 
This is a holy train. It's a pure train. It's a clean train. There's no good trying to say, I'm going to trust God, and you continue living in a sinful lifestyle. It doesn't work like that. If you're having an affair with that woman, if you're hooked up in pornography, if you're into drugs or alcohol, and you say, I'm going to trust God, it's not going to work. Because your trust is not in God. It's in that, uh, that hellish, devilish uh, sin that you're involved in. What must I do, Angus? Well, you must repent. You must say sorry. You must leave it there, and you must move along. And I'm going to pray for you at the end of this program that God will increase your faith. But more than that, that God will give you a body and a mind and a spirit that is clean so that He can do His work in you. It's like people who are saying, Lord, please heal me from emphysema. But you continue to smoke 40 cigarettes a day. It's not going to work. Stop smoking. Start trusting God. It's as simple as that. And um, it's a, a practical thing. Faith is a, is a verb, by the way. It's not a noun. A noun is like this post here, like this fence post, okay? That's a noun. A verb is a doing word. It's a doing word. Now, we, you and I need to understand that. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. You say, but I don't even have much faith, Angus. Well, all you need is faith the size of a, that's right, a mustard seed. And Jesus says, you can tell that mountain to move and it must go. We need faith to finish the race. We need faith to get to our destination. This train, this virtual train, this train's going to heaven. This train is not going down any cul-de-sac. It's not doing any U-turns and it's not stopping. This train is going to heaven and it's taking God's people with it. God's people of faith, not God's people of good works. Look at blind Bartimaeus. If we look at Mark chapter 10 and verse 52. I want to tell you about Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was probably a poor beggar, right? And he was sitting in the dust in the side street and he had no one. He had nothing. He heard that Jesus was coming down the road. And he shouted out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. No one listened to him. Jesus obviously couldn't hear him because of the noise of the people. Wherever the master went, multitudes were following him. The miracle working God. And this man said, no ways, he's passing by. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna miss out this time. I only have one chance. Maybe I'm talking to somebody there right now who only has one chance. The doctors have said to you, there's no hope for you. Go home, make yourself comfortable because you're going to die. Maybe some people say you're a loser. You've been through an ugly divorce and there's no hope for you. It's a lie, I'm telling you, from the pit of hell. Today, put your faith in Jesus Christ and he will turn your situation around. It's a decision that you have to make. Bartimaeus made a decision. His decision was, I'm not allowing the Lord to pass me by without him praying for me. So he shouted even louder. The people told him to shut up. You're making too much noise. How many times have people told you to shut up when you start talking about faith? Who, who is this Jesus you're talking about? We always hear you talking about that, but we don't see any difference in your life. Shout louder. Jesus says, if you don't, the stones will shout out. Jesus says, if you lift up my name, I will draw people unto myself. He is the miracle worker. He is the God of faith. He is a miracle, in fact. Jesus was born from a virgin. Think about that, sir. If there's a gynecologist watching this program, tell me if it's possible. You'll tell me it's impossible, Angus. That's right. Jesus Christ is a miracle. And he performs miracles if you and I can trust him. So Bartimaeus continued shouting. Eventually, the Lord stopped. He heard his voice. He turned around, and he said, who's, who's calling me? All of a sudden, the crowd turned. Ask me about it. <laughs> Ask me about it. Hey? Ask me about it. 
Ah, I tell you what, I love people. Please, don't get me wrong. That's why I'm speaking to you. But people are fickle. That is a special word for you, fickle. Today you're a hero. Tomorrow you're a bum. Excuse the language. But that's exactly how it is. God said to me, one million people, it's time, prayer meeting, Bloemfontein. We had six weeks to do it. People thought I was mad. I didn't have too many friends in those days. Even some that were close to me said he's lost it this time. This time, and of course the devil said to me, this time I'm going to expose you for the fraud that you are. That's how the devil spoke to me. Now I had a choice, see? And my choice was to believe God or to believe the lies of the devil. I chose to believe God. I can take you to the actual spot where it happened. Running up the hill, I was jogging in the morning, going around a bend. There was a quarry on the one side, just on the edge of our farm. And I didn't audibly hear God speak to me. But I want to tell you, He spoke to me so loud in my heart. As I was going up that road, He said to me, Angus, one million people, it's time. And He even gave me the date. We had six weeks to prepare it. Now, even Dr. Billy Graham, when he organized the campaign, he would come two years before. That's what happened in South Africa to fill a stadium. This is a crowd of people that there's no stadium in the world can fill. Faith is what keep, kept me going. And it's faith that will keep you going. And it's faith that will get this train to heaven. Nothing else. Faith. Not walking by sight, but walking by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you walk by what your eyes see, you'll get depressed. You'll throw the towel in, you'll jump off the train, and you'll go back into the far country, and you'll die there. I want to tell you, Bartimaeus persisted. Jesus said, bring him to me. And he came. And he asked Bartimaeus a strange question, didn't he? He said to Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? The man was stone blind. I've got a little grandson. I've got a granddaughter, three years old. If I said to her, Rebecca, what do you think that man wants uh, Jesus to do for him? She would say, Kulu. She calls me Kulu. That means grandfather in Zulu. Kulu, he wants his sight. Why did Jesus ask that question to Bartimaeus? Because he was testing his faith. My dear friend, some of you say, no, I'm believing in God, but you won't speak it out. You've got to actually speak it out. I started speaking it out. I said, we're going to have a prayer meeting that's going to change the country. We're going to have it in six weeks' time. We're going to have a million people there. I had never in my life seen a million people in the flesh before. And I'm now 74 years old almost. Never ever had I seen a million people in the flesh. I'm not talking about on TV. In fact, I haven't seen a million people on TV either. We are going to be a people that walk by faith and not by sight. But by faith, I was walking that road. Now, when, you, when God gives you a word, okay? Like, for example, there's a young man there. I would love to have my own farm one day. Start trusting God. Start wa working towards it. Start talking about it. Start dreaming about it. Start writing it down. Get confirmation from God. And tell people, not anybody, because some people will just trample your pearls in, in, in the mud and they'll come back and devour you. That's what the word says. But trusted people, tell them. I came home from that run. I told my wife. Shame, man. <laughs> I think my wife's going to get a big crown from the Lord. Huh? She's put up with me all these years. Jill, we're going to have a prayer meeting. Where? In Bloemfontein. When? And I gave her the date. And I said, there's going to be a million people. Angus, how are we going to do that? I don't know, but that's what God said to me. And it's happened. We had 1.4 million to be exact. And we're not even sure about that number because we never sold any tickets and we never asked for any money. And we never took a collection. And it was all paid for before we arrived. That is what God wants you and I to do. He wants us to walk a life of faith. Not good works, not effort, but faith. Why? Because it brings glory to His name. And so, folks, Bartimaeus said, Lord Jesus, that I might receive my sight. And the Bible says, and immediately he received his sight. And he went away rejoicing. And the Lord said to Bartimaeus, I've got it written down right here. Mark cha chapter 10 and verse 52. 
Your faith has made you well. That's what Jesus said to Bartimaeus. He didn't say anything else. Your faith has made you well. Bartimaeus persisted. And I want to tell you today, if you are going to persist, God will hear your prayers. You see, folks, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. You can't do it any other way. You've got to trust Him. You've got to trust the man from Galilee. People are always asking me, Angus, please pray for me. I want more faith. I want faith to believe God for the impossible. And you know what I always say? And a lot of people do that, folks. I say to them, I will not pray that God will give you more faith. I will pray that God will give you a hunger for this book, the Bible. That is what I will pray. Because you see, according to Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Get away from those negative people. I really mean that. Get away from those people who will tell you this country is going to the dogs. There's no future for this country. Get away from them. Because God's never told me that. And if God had told me that, I would have left this country a long time ago. God has never said that to me. And America's finished and there's no hope for America. Who said so? Hey, is that man's opinion? We are not dependent on what's happening in this world. We are dependent only on God. And until God says it, I'm not interested in hearing anybody else's opinion. I really, there's a special word there for somebody. And maybe you're an old person and maybe you're living by yourself. And you just watch the news all the time. I want to tell you something. And I'm going to say it from my heart because it's affected me in the past. A lot of that news is blatant lies. And the only reason why they do it is they want to sell their product. I've done, I've, I've given interviews many times to the newspapers, on the radio, on the television, and they have purposely misinterpreted what I've said in order to cause a big upset and sell more newspapers. And it's egg all over my face. My wife often says to me, Angus, don't even answer them because she knows what's coming. You need to listen to the good news. That's why this book is called The Good News, because it's full of good news. This is the bread of life. This is the bread of life. You are hungry, then eat from the bread of life and you'll never hunger again. This book is ever, ever, ever true. This book is not dated. It doesn't go out of uh, date. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. And it's the same forever. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. This is what you need to spend time in. People come to me and they say, Angus, I'm depressed. I'm battling with depression. I want to tell you something now. Those tablets might help you for a while. This book will set you free. How do you know? Because it happened to me. I was taking so much strain on this very farm that I couldn't even sleep at night. That's the honest truth. I was a young man, just, just over 30 years old. I could not. My wife was worried about me. I couldn't sleep. I'd go to the pub. I'd start taking a few beers to try and calm my nerves. Didn't work. Woke up the next morning with a sore head. That's all. Same stress, same fear, same anxiety, same depression. What happened? I went to church on a Sunday morning and I met the man from Galilee, the faith man, the man whose other name is faith. And I want to tell you, my life was changed until this day. Oh, yes, I have moments. Can you imagine what I felt like when I was sleeping the week before? We had set up the, um, the field for that prayer gathering. Thousand hectares, tractors, as far as I could see, mowing the grass putting up a, a platform that was three stories high. <laughs> Folks, I'm telling you, no guarantee of one soul coming. Not even one denomination in this country said, we're in, we'll underwrite it, because they didn't know about it. It's not their fault. So the Enchia Church, the Baptist Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Pentecostal Churches, the Charismatic Churches were nowhere to be seen. Not one phone call, we're coming with our people. And what happened that day? I'll never forget as long as I live. They flew me in in a helicopter, and I just saw people 
We're talking about two kilometers. That's over a mile of people. You know, I was so relieved <laughs> to see the people that I didn't even get emotional about the crowd because I didn't think they were going to come. Now, that, how's that for a man of faith, eh? But you know something? How do you grow in faith? Well, spending time with the faithful one. How do you, I said it the other day, how do you cover, this is what the Chinese say, how do you cover a trip of a thousand miles? One step at a time. That's how you do it. And that's how you get faith. Faith starts. You know, when I got saved, I started praying for people who had sore heads, had a sore throat, a little bit stiff. That's how I started praying. And then by the end, we're praying for people who are getting out of wheelchairs and the dead being raised and the weather changing and miracles happening. It comes step by step. Get alongside faithful people. Read books of faith. I've read about all the giants that you can think of. I love books, by the way. You want to send me a gift, send me a book. But I'm telling you, you better find out first whether I haven't already read it. I've read all of them. I'm talking about the giants. James Hudson Taylor eh, went to China. No one sent him. No denomination. No one, no one paid for his ticket. He went on his own. Eh? Amy Carmichael. She went to India. No one paid for her either. We just keep going on and on and on. The greatest hymn writer next to Charles Wesley, Fanny Crosby, blind. She wrote hundreds and hundreds of hymns. So many hymns that she even wrote under ghost uh, authors' uh, names because she had so many hymns. Folks, I want to tell you, all God's requiring from you today is faith. That's all. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. And it comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Spending time with the faithful one. You see, when you spend time with God, your faith automatically increases. It's not by going to Bible college and learning about faith. No, 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 no. It's an experience, you see. I never be, I've never been to Bible college, but I've been to the school of life. I've been to the cross of Calvary. I've been to hell and back again, and I really have. But Jesus has never, ever deserted me once. He says in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I believe that, folks. Even though sometimes I'm saying, Lord, where are you? It's getting so dark. He says, I'm here. Angus, I'm right here. You know, even the disciples themselves in Luke chapter 17, verse 5, Lord, please increase our faith. Now, if they asked for that, why shouldn't you be asking for that? You know, some people I say, can I, can I pray for you? No, nah, no, nah, it's okay. I'll work through this thing on my own. That is just arrogance and it's pride and it always comes before a fall. You cannot do it on your own. I tried it. It doesn't work. We've got to trust God. We've got to humble ourselves and say, Lord, like that woman with the issue of blood, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be healed. Bartimaeus, if I can just get his attention, I know he'll heal me. And what did he do? Time and time again, the lepers came to him. He healed them. Jesus wants you today to walk in victory. He wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. He wants to bless you. He hasn't come here to curse you. He's not punishing you. Angus, why is this happening to me? Why is God doing this to me? God's not doing it to you. And I want to say to you, please, and I'm not rebuking you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to challenge you. Many people that come to me, why has God done this to me? We look at the story and we see it wasn't God at all. The Lord told you not to marry that man because he's an unbeliever. And the Bible says you shall not be unevenly yoked, but you went ahead and you did it. And you said, no, I'll change him. And you didn't change him. In fact, he's changed you because you don't go to church anymore, do you? You can't blame God for that. But God can still see it come to pass. You can, you can say, Lord, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And he will change your husband's life. We have seen hundreds of thousands of men's life, lives changed right here on this farm. We've seen it with our own eyes. And it's still happening all over the world. Don't say, God, why is my business going like this? God told you not to be unevenly yoked. You went into business with that man. You knew that he was an unbeliever. And when you started making a profit and you wanted to tithe 10% to the Lord, he said, not with my money. And what happened? 
everything started going downhill. It's either God's way or no way at all. I want to really say that to you today. And that is how you walk in faith, through obedience. See, see what would have happened if I was running up that road and, and the Lord said to me, I want, you to, um, I want you to have a prayer meeting, a national prayer meeting, and I want a million people to come because I want to change the government. I want to change that nuclear power station because it's going to cripple the country. I want to bring rain in a, a drought year and give you a bumper crop of maize in this country. I want to see ministers praying in parliament and singing hymns in parliament. And when you bring those people, because you are going to do it, and I'm going to make it happen. What happens? What would have happened if I said, no, nah, Lord, I can't do that. I'm not prepared to do that. You know what would have happened? God would have used somebody else because he's no respect of persons. And he's not just looking for the high and mighty. He's looking for anybody. He's looking for somebody like Moses who blew it. He was a murderer. He was hiding in the, in the desert. God used him. God used a shepherd boy. God used a tent maker. God used a blasphemous fisherman. Why? Because they trusted him. Now I want to say to you, when you spend time with somebody, then you become like that person. So you spend time with men and women of faith and your faith will grow. And you spend time reading the Word of God. And you spend time reading books of men and women of great faith. Those who have finished the race. And I really want to say that to you today. So whoever you stay, uh, stay with, whoever you spend time with, if your wife was a woman of faith, sir, you're very privileged. And especially if she's an intercessor like my wife. If your dad or your mom are men and women of faith, young man, you're very blessed, let me tell you. But sometimes it's hard to come out of a home of unbelievers. You see, I had the privilege of leading my father and my mother to Christ. But I didn't come out of a Christian home. And sometimes it can be hard. But you know something? It taught me lessons that I've never forgotten. And talking about that, I want to tell you about my dad. My dad was a blacksmith. Okay? The real deal, a blacksmith. And I would sometimes go with my mother in the car to go and fetch my dad from work at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm talking about in Zimbabwe, a place called Bulawayo. And my dad was the blacksmith there at an engineering company. And I will never forget it. As long as I live, I'd come up, get out the car. My mom would allow me to go into the workshop, a big workshop, and I just heard noise, big steam hammers coming down, bending the steel. There was a, a big furnace going on. My dad had big tongs, and he had a, a, a piece of steel he would take out of that fire, and it was red hot. He'd put it on an anvil, and with a hammer, like a, looked like a 14-pound hammer, he'd start beating these these bits of iron, steel, and molding them into the shapes that he wanted them. I will never forget it. His face was black <laughs> with soot. The sweat was pouring down his face. And uh, he used to wear like a, a pair of overalls with cut-off arms. He had muscles, I'm telling you. Arnold Schwarzenegger would... <laughs> I'm exaggerating now, but he was so strong. And this little boy of four or five years old, I used to look up at my dad, starry-eyed, and he'd give me a big smile in that Scottish accent. And he'd say, yes, Angus, it's good to see you, laddie. And then he'd carry on, bang, and you see the sparks flying. That was the picture that I have of my dad when I was a young boy. In my humble opinion, he was the strongest man <laughs> that ever lived. I'm getting emotional here, just telling you the story. You know, we would go to the to the local rugby match in town. It used to take place on a Sunday afternoon in those days. There were some big rugby players there. They were strong and they were fit and you could smell that, uh, that uh, ointment, that liniment they used to put on and I'll watch them and then I'd look up at my dad <laughs> and I'd say, nah, not one of them is as strong as this man. And I'd go anywhere with my father, anywhere. Why? Because I trusted him. I trusted him. Remember that old uh, commercial? I think it was one of the best ones on television. I won't use the name because I may be getting into trouble. Of that one uh, particular car company with those pickups. And the two little boys were talking to each other. And the one said, my dad is tough. 
His bucky is tough, and the other boy said, yeah, but my dad's bucky is tougher than your dad's pickup. Now, that's a joke, but you know, folks, when you spend time with Jesus, your faith grows. And when I spent time with my father, my trust in him grew. I cannot wait to see my dad in heaven one day. You know, I had the privilege of leading him to Jesus. One of the highlights of my life. That big, strong Scotsman. I'd say to him when he was older, Dad, you're going to come down to the gym? <laughs> He'd say, the gym, laddie? He says, I spend 18 hours every day in the gym. <laughs> and that was the truth. But you know, I want to say to you today that all you've got to do is put your trust in Jesus and he'll see you through. Bartimaeus put his trust in the Lord. The woman with the issue of blood put her trust in the Lord. Every one of those people that the masses brought to Jesus, he healed all of them. And he can still do it. And I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it in my own life, in my family. Oh, yes. And he wants to do it for you today. But he needs you to trust him. Now, as I close, I did promise you at the beginning of this uh, program that I was going to pray for you. And I want to pray that God will increase your faith. Just like a disciple said, Lord, please increase our faith. And didn't he ever. Do you know that not one of those uh, disciples ran from God at the end? Every single one died a martyr's death, actually. But man, look at the signs and the wonders and the miracles that came through their lives. And God wants to do it for you. Like never before, he's looking for a man. He's looking for a woman, a young boy, a young girl. Put your hand up today and say, Lord. I'm choosing to trust you by faith. That's all he wants. And he'll do the rest. Are you prepared to do that today? Are you prepared to ask him and to believe that he'll answer your prayers? So that you too can pray for the sick. That's right. That you can believe for the miracles. That you can ask the Lord to change the weather. We've seen it, haven't we? That's right. Many, many times. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you today for faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I'm praying for my dear friend watching this program who's maybe suffering from cancer, maybe suffering from some other disease, maybe in a state of absolute depression. In Jesus' name, by faith, I come against that ailment and I speak life and healing and complete deliverance in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would increase our faith. I'm praying this prayer for myself as well. Lord, I want more faith, Father. I want more faith, Jesus, to finish this race. I want more faith, Lord, to trust that this train is going to reach its destination, which is heaven. And it's going to be filled to capacity with believers who are walking by faith and not by sight. I'm thanking you, Lord. I'm thanking you for that lady who's still trusting you for a baby and she has not yet conceived. Lord, by faith, I thank you that that child is coming and she will write to me and she'll tell me that she's pregnant because you are a miracle working God. I'm praying for that broken marriage, Lord, that you'll do a miracle in their lives even today and heal them and make them fall in love with each other like never before so that they can be a testimony to the world that we serve a God of faith. I ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Thank you for joining us on the Revival Train. Download the free Angus Buchan app to stay updated, watch your favorite programs, and enjoy daily devotionals. For more information on the Revival Train and Shalom Ministries, please go to www.angusbucken.co.za For children's stories, go to the Angus Bucken app and look for Snowy, Heroes of the Bible. Please join us next week on the Revival Train.